You don't realize just how many products fast food companies put out until you list them all on paper. We're not looking at Burger King, we're talking about Burger King products. As far as I've seen, Wikipedia doesn't do a whole lot of similar article titles like this, but we all know the franchise. So let's explore how things like this came into existence instead. This is a real product that Burger King sold, and not just a modification that someone posted to the internet. The company began in 1954, but it actually had a 1953 predecessor called Insta Burger King. Insta Burger King predominantly featured burgers, fries, soft drinks, milkshakes, and desserts. The 50s. In 1954, it was acquired by its franchisees. A franchisee just means an individual owner of a restaurant. I always heard the word franchise and just assumed it meant business. But then I worked at a Chick-fil-A in the summer between college semesters. This was before the gay marriage controversy, and learned that the owner was the actual owner of that location. He still had to operate within Chick-fil-A's core rules, such as no being open on Sundays and no alcohol served in the restaurant. But other than that, he ran the place and maintained control of that specific restaurant. Kind of like a Gus Fring, if you will. You may have noticed I've been doing a lot of Breaking Bad references lately. I'm currently on season four of my first rewatch. But that's a franchisee. And those are the people that purchased Insta Burger King in 1954 and gave it its modern title. The first thing they did was expand their menu to include what is universally agreed to be their most famous product, the Whopper, the number one item on almost every Burger King menu, and put them on the map as the number one competitor to the other burger behemoth, McDonald's. So we're off to a good start. However, this is the first of many misleading food presentations, because that all-too-tasty Whopper in every Burger King commercial just so happens to have a real-life parallel. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. My grubby little nine-year-old paws couldn't wait to make contact with that bad boy. Since then, we've seen all kinds of offerings. Chicken, fish, vegetarian options, which includes both salads and meatless sandwiches. We've also seen a breakfast menu, ices, and for some reason, juice. They've brought different foods in and out of the restaurant to either generate more sales or see what people respond to. Taco Bell is a master at this, often bringing in new items only to pull them from the menu mere months later, creating holes in my heart that have yet to be filled anywhere else. The Volcano Burrito, the Grilled Cheese Burrito, the Cool Ranch Dorito Taco, they've permanently damaged my trust. But I also can't resist going because it's too addictive. Burger King introduced the breakfast menu alongside the specialty sandwich line in an attempt to capture more of the adult market. The specialty sandwich menu, introduced in 1979, has one surviving food item, the original chicken sandwich. The new food lines were part of then-President Donald N. Smith's plan to help restructure the restaurant as it was struggling with operations and image. Donald was brought over from McDonald's and is the spitting image of what you'd expect an executive from either of those restaurants to look like. And the plan actually worked. The chicken sandwich, along with other foods being offered at the time, helped boost sales 15%, which they tried to do again in the future, to less success. Burger King was sold once in 2004, and again in 2010. And due to these changes, they also went through several iterations of cooking equipment. Which is why I was lured in by a 90s Mr. Potato Head commercial advertising a new french fry recipe. On behalf of Burger King, it's a privilege to introduce the five that'll change history. The crispy new Burger King fries beat McDonald's fries in a nationwide taste test. Which then disappeared somewhere in the 2000s. I think about the 90s fry flavor every time I'm at Burger King. Fast food restaurants don't care about you at all. They just want to make Mr. Potato Head commercials to build loyalty. Keep in mind, this was right after Toy Story had just come out. And then yank it out from under you whenever they please. And that's why I'm exposing them in this video. Burger King started offering a value menu in 1998. It was targeted towards value-oriented customers, which in corporate fast food speak just means poor people. How can we, one of the largest burger chains in America, extract more money from people that don't have it? The value menu typically featured items ranging from $1 to $1.50. And because it has a shiny professional photo on the menu, nobody questions the quality of the ingredients. People just toss it in their mouths like King Neptune from Spongebob. Items that appeared throughout the history of the value menu don't appear to have much evidence on the internet. Such as 2009's Buck Double, which was meant to act as a competitor to the McDouble from McDonald's. So since we don't have an official photo, you know what that means. 
As with most fast food chains, Burger King had a menu targeted towards children, which makes it sound so much worse whenever you word it that way. To give credit where credit is due, Burger King did have one of the coolest toy lines in history. The original line of 151 Pokemon. Complete with Pokeballs, making them much larger than your average Burger King toy. And gold-plated cards that I think you had to pay extra for? I don't know, these are my childhood memories speaking. You had your keychains, you had your bean bags, you had your squirt- Uh oh. I remember getting a Mewtwo just as the toy line was winding down, and it came in a huge green incubator just like the movie. But yeah, they target children. There was a period of adult-oriented Burger King menus. They offered high-quality products like Angus beef, extra thick burgers, and chicken fries. I think these are still on the menu? I don't know, I don't go to Burger King very often. The last and relatively unknown demographic that Burger King targets is the superfan. The Burger King, if you will. A superfan is a demographic generally defined as being 18 to 49 years old. It consists mostly of males, and is defined as visiting a fast food restaurant at least five times a month, while eating fast food at least 16 times a month. I'm not exactly sure what it means that they're eating fast food 16 times a month, but only visiting the restaurant five times. Is someone bringing it to them? Do they steal it? Are they sitting down in the restaurant in the morning and staying until evening? Some questions never receive answers. The first venture Burger King took into healthier food was in 1983 with the salad bar. It was moderately successful, but the franchise owners complained that it cost too much to operate and was a poor return on investment. Uh, yeah. Burger King is a burger restaurant. That's like if you decided to open a whiskey and cigar shop and then added a salad bar. It's not too surprising people weren't interested. They also tried adding a healthier kids meal option, which included macaroni and cheese, apples, and chocolate milk. Well, you got the apples right. Burger King eventually ventured back into the vegetarian market again with the BK Veggie in 1995. Now, just in case you weren't around for this decade, you should know that the 90s were not a good time to be a vegetarian. Everything was made with beans, it was all deep fried, and it tasted like the food equivalent of a dust bunny. The BK Veggie was praised for being low in fat content, implying that it was a healthy alternative to a standard burger. But as the Center of Science in the Public Interest pointed out in 2005, it contained 930 milligrams of sodium, which is approximately 40 to 50 percent of the average person's daily recommended intake. But then, in 2019, Burger King closed one of the best partnerships in franchise history. Impossible Foods, known for their Impossible Burger, came together with Burger King to create the Impossible Whopper. If you haven't yet had a burger made with Impossible Meat, I'll come right out and say it. It is as good, if not better, than many of the beef burgers out there if you prepare it correctly. The meat is juicy. The texture is great. It has a flavor that... What is that? Was it shrink-wrapped? Did someone leave it in Mewtwo's incubator? Why does it loosely resemble a mushroom? Full disclosure, I haven't actually had Burger King's Impossible Whopper. But given this photo, and the other real-life photos we've seen in this video, I'm not too confident in the product. They also introduced the Mac and Cheetos, which I had no idea ever existed. Introduced in 2016, this does count as a vegetarian food item, and it's probably the least disgusting photo we've seen so far. But boy, talk about sodium intake. Five pieces, which is what comes in one order, is also half your daily recommended intake. One BK veggie and one Mac and Cheetos and you're good to go. The rapid fire round of various Burger King breakfast sandwiches includes the croissant breakfast sandwich with sausage, the supreme breakfast sandwich, the enormous omelet sandwich, in the Sausage Toasty. They've also done hot dogs, bone-in pork ribs, the Whopperito, and a Yumbo. A Black Forest Ham, American Cheese, Lettuce and Mayonnaise Sandwich. Last, but definitely not least, the Windows 7 Whopper. This was a Whopper with seven patties, and was a limited time offer with Microsoft in Japan for the introduction of Windows 7. No wonder Wagyu beef is so expensive because all the normal cows got wiped out with these burgers. Other things that have been wiped out include my appetite due to all these photos. For every like left on this video, a battery cage Burger King chicken is freed from its imprisonment. Help me and the chickens out by leaving one on this video. 
They actually have a whole section on guidelines they've implemented to help improve the treatment of animals, but I didn't read that. So it's on you if you want to learn what it says. You guys enjoy your lives. I'm going to go make an Impossible Burger. Yup.